Welcome to Coffee and Conversation. My name is Honorine, and today I'm with Darren Sagal, who is pursuing a PhD in computational science. Darren, welcome to Coffee and Conversation, and thank you for being with me today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, so my first question is, um, could you please introduce yourself and tell us more about who you are, what you study, maybe why FSU, anything you want to share with us? Um, so I am a second year PhD student in the Department of Scientific Computing, and I study computational science and specifically in respect to fire dynamics. Um, so this is actually a research area that I got into as an undergraduate at FSU. Um, and I decided to do my master's and then my PhD here so that I could continue working on this specific research just because FSU in particular, but also kind of Southeast United States is a, a really great area to study fire science. And why is um, Southeast a great um, area to study fire science? Thinking California has more fire. Yeah. <laughs> they have, they definitely have more, but the issue is since it's, you know, it's so easy to for fires to catch there, it's a lot drier. Um, you can't just go out and burn whenever you want. So if a wildfire happens, and of course, like you can collect data on it, we can use satellite images. Um, but to study fire, the same way you study almost anything, you kind of have, you want to design an experiment, try to control some things, see what happens. And so the Southeast is a really popular area for prescribed fire, which is intentional burning and some places use it for like land management there are a bunch of like walking trails around the city um, that use prescribed fire to kind of um, control the landscape there are a bunch of um, kind of different plants and species here that rely on this process in order to propagate and survive um, and so here it's great because we're allowed to burn uh, within set rules, of course, because it still could be dangerous. Um, so I get the chance to design experiments and then I get to go, I set up cameras and I film it and then I can kind of extract information from those videos that helps us understand fires. And so hopefully that'll help us understand fires like the ones in California or Australia um, to maybe better understand how they're going to behave and what will happen. So you're telling me that your research is to be an arsonist <laughs> and to create fires in that, that you can control basically. Yeah, so I had to, I did um, like um, training and certification programs to become um, licensed as like a firefighter type two, which means I had to learn a lot of things and I'm trustworthy with some extent of it. But honestly, before I started, I was thinking, I even opening the oven, I don't like it. I'm scared of hot things. So it's uh, more of a necessity than a desire, but it is really cool, the stuff that we, we get to learn from it. And I hope it'll be useful, applicable in, in real world with teams that are like actually out there with the fires. Yeah, oh, that's, that's very interesting that you study fire, but you don't like um, hot things. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, a big paradox. <laughs> and so where did that, um, especially since you don't like anything hot, um, where did that interest in fire uh, come from? Um, so initially it was more just, I, I like learning new things. I love having new opportunities. So I was doing research um, starting my sophomore year of undergrad with the Geophysical Fluid Dynamics Institute, GFDI. Um, it's, it's a very physics-based institute. They're actually located in the basement of the physics building on campus. Um, and there I was doing regular fluids research. I was doing something called particle image velocimetry, which is just using cameras to capture a fluid's flow. So you'll see it with particles, run it through some code later, and you get a lot of interesting information. Um, and while I was doing this, they were starting up the FIRE program. And so the summer before my senior year, they're like, hey, we have a group who's doing this. We could use your camera skills in here because everyone else does modeling, but we want to capture some experimental burns. Um, and I was a little terrified because I didn't know what that would entail. Like I said, it's kind of scary, scared of fire. But um, I also, I wanted to see what this new application could be. 
Um, so I said yes, and I kind of just haven't left <laughs> since then. This is fascinating. So you're pursuing a PhD in computational science, but you yes. study fire and you know you experiment on fires. So mm -hmm. where is the link between computational science, which you know to me is like computer and all that stuff, and then yeah. fire, which would be in my mind more maybe like geography or earth and and science. Yeah. So originally, officially in terms of FSU, at first there was none. So GFDI was doing fire research. We have a lot of modelers. We would have people from like every department. So we have had a geography student. We've had like environmental ecology students, um, a lot of physicists because we approach it generally from like a fluid dynamics physics perspective. Um, but then, so in one way or another, all of us ended up having to code things. Um, so we do we do go out to somewhere called Tall Timbers Research Station. It's kind of just north of Tallahassee um, to do experimental burns. And that's amazing for data collection, actually physically doing the experiment. But the goal for for doing these experiments is for, for at least for our group is to learn things um, that allow us to better and maybe more quickly and efficiently model the way that fire spreads or maybe the way that a plume behaves. Um, I think one of the kind of one of the long term goals is to, you know, have a very quick but accurate fire model that say like given some initial conditions so maybe the way the fire started or the weather, um, how that fire might spread and then maybe that can be applied in an operational setting. Um, but all of that comes from the computer modeling so now GFDI has partnered with the Department of Scientific Computing to create this fire dynamics uh, graduate track uh, because it requires so much computing and modeling. And even, so my research, I, I don't actually model anything. Um, so like I said, I go to the fires and I film them, but so then I take those videos and I make computer vision algorithms that then process it. So I feed this video to a computer and then I tell the computer, give me all the information you can give me uh, about this so that we can kind of pull out some of the underlying physics or some of the statistics that describe fire spread and then those can be applied to the models. Um, so it's a really big web of different disciplines working together, um, but generally on the kind of experimental and research side, it does come down to all of these different pieces of the web are connected by computing. Wow, that's amazing. And in that big web, do you include um, firefighters? Like, is your research about, you know, how to help firefighters fight fires? Or it's more about, you know, how to prevent them from happening because you understand how they start? So I think it's more how to help once they already happen. So like, I, there's this is a spot of controversy in fire science, depending on where you're from. But so like in the Southeast, it's great to burn. People burn here. It helps the environment, it helps keep things in check. It's honestly like all over a really good process. And like, even if you're worried about wildlife, there are ways to initiate the burns that animals can leave the area and not be harmed and then go back and they're totally fine. And then the, the other species that need the fire have the opportunity to benefit from it. Um, and some make arguments that like in California, right, the reason that the one of the reasons that these massive fires happen, of course, it's dry, it's very easy for things to light there, but because burns aren't done, so much fuel has built up and that's part of the reason they get so big. So it's, um, yeah, so it's kind of understanding what to do once they happen, because there isn't even a clear consensus on whether or not they should happen. A lot of people think that they are good and they can be beneficial. Um, and I agree, I think it absolutely, I mean, it depends on circumstances. Um, and where it is so if a wildfire started like next to my house right now it would be great <laughs> um, but yeah so it's definitely what can we what can we do um, and to do that so a lot of the times when we have our meetings and stuff we don't talk about you know that application of it because the first step is before trying to kind of disseminate the information and apply it we need to fully understand it um, so a lot of times when we talk about it, it feels like research for the sake of research, just figuring things out and knowing things. Um, 
but then yeah we do kind of keep in the back of our heads like hey we need to constantly communicate this information um and as we understand things get it out there and that's one of the really great things actually about our partnership with tall timbers because they do the burns and they're they're a really great kind of bridge between the research side and the actual kind of firefighting active controlling wildfire side um and they're they're a research institution too so we work with them and it kind of it gets our new information or results of experiments get spread out a bit more which is really awesome actually and on the side when you don't research and when you don't make fires <laughs> what do you do on your spare time um so i recently i joined fsu's women's ultimate team which i've actually been I love it so oh, much. It's my awesome. first time doing like a team team sport and it's mm -hmm. amazing. Everyone is super nice and they're all so good. <sighs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I do that. I like to do a lot of art. I think um, I used to say it's kind of like a nice break or like mental release from doing all the science stuff. But I think over the last few years, I realized a lot of the people who are like most successful, at least in my degree program, but I think in a lot of the sciences are like the really like creative people. So now I do it as like a kind of like relax and keep my mind open kind of thing. Um, but other than that, I've been trying to take advantage of um, Tallahassee's location. So after I did my master's right after undergrad, because I knew I wanted to work on this project, I thought I'd have enough of it after the master's and I wouldn't want to come back to school so I actually left for a semester after I started doing like other jobs I moved out of Tallahassee um, and then after deciding to come back for the PhD I realized how much I like it here and how many I don't know I appreciate all of the kind of like hiking and cave exploring um, tubing like other outdoor activities are so accessible from this place um, so I've been trying to get my fill of them before I leave again, more likely, more finally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And what kind of art do you do? Like, is it painting or is it sculpture, drawings? I wish there was sculpture. I've never been good at that. <laughs> no, um, I paint sometimes. I tend to make a really big mess when I do. So more often than not, I'll turn to digital art instead because not as destructive to my room um but yes yeah, some some combination of either physically painting or just doing digital art or animation on my computer wow that's amazing i love that <laughs> um and my last question is how do you see yourself in five years from today okay i actually got this recently oh um, and my my cop out answer was oh, i have like two more years to figure that out <laughs> but um, I so definitely or hopefully graduated. Um, I so I was asked what I wanted to do for a job after this, um, and the only kind of the most specific answer I have is something that allows me to solve cool science problems. Because mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I love the fire work I love that there's so much physics and math behind it I like that I get to use computer vision because I I'm absolutely in love with that field I've been doing it since my sophomore year um, but I'm not like married to the fire problem I think there are other there are tons of other ways to use what I know um, but it definitely has taught me that I enjoy the work I do a lot more when I like the application when I kind of care about the application it's a big motivator for me um, so yeah whether it's renewable energy or self-driving cars or research and development for like animation, visual effects um, or film, kind of anything that lets me solve problems that'll help people, hmm. I'd be excited to do. Um, more specific than that, not a <laughs> but I've got time, so it's okay. Oh yeah, plenty of time. Um... <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for your time and for this uh, great interview about fire. Um, it was fascinating. I didn't know that you could, um, you know, create fires in order to learn uh, from them and that it was actually good for plants. You know, you said uh, yeah. 
it um, that allows plants to survive, um, but also propagate. And I'm like, wow, yeah, <laughs> fascinating. I think it's the coolest thing. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. Um, I, um, you know, good luck with everything and with all your research. Um, and really, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.